It's the grandson of the right thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light, Little Flop. In 2017, I was called out of the world by the Holy Spirit to go into the wilderness to fast for 40 days. And during that fast, the 37th day of that fast to be exact, which would be August 21st, 2017. August 21st, 2017 was the 37th day of that fast that the Spirit called me out on. That 37th day I was caught up. Like Paul said, whether in the body or out of the body, I can't say. <laughs> but I was caught up. And I communed, supped, face to face. and saw the presence before me show itself in the form of a radiant glowing skull shining all the colors of the rainbow August 21st 2017 seven years ago that happened when I left that Wilderness. I came out strong in the spirit, according to the scriptures. And I've been preaching ever since. And you guys are hearing that. You're hearing the end of it. See, like I said, it's been seven years. Well, as you know, Abba does things in cycles of seven. That's the way he created Six days he worked, seventh day he rested. Doesn't mean the seventh day doesn't exist. It just means it's a rest day. That's how everything else is worked. You're working out your body, you have to work, 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 but you gotta take a rest day. That's part of the process of building. So when Abba built, he had a rest day as well. So that seventh day represents the end of something, and then there will be a beginning. See, a new week will start, a new set of seven. Well, isn't it ironic that about approximately two months from now, that same thing that happened on that day when I was caught up is going to happen again. Like I said, in approximately two months, it's going to happen again. Now, of course, when I went out in the 40, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was drawn away by the Spirit to do it. It was not my own plan, not my own ideals. But the timing of it is very interesting, and why? Because the 37th day of the fast was the day of a, what they call the Great American Solar Eclipse. It was the same exact day. The day of the solar eclipse was the day I was caught up. In the 40. You see the irony of the timing of that? <laughs> also 33 years old. So this year represents the ending again of another seven years, like I told you, with my own age because I'm turning 40. And you all know that that's another significant number with Abba. 40 years. It represents purification, cleansed. You see? So, just like when he had me go on the 40, to be purified. You see? To be renewed. It's going to happen again. But this time, not for the first fruits. You see? But for the main harvest. Because that's the way a harvest works. Remember what it says about Yahusha? And it says he is the first fruits. You see? So then what he experiences, he goes through it first, and then his preaching, his teaching, is telling you all about what you'll go through because he's gone through it. You see that? So 
then he can tell you truly, truly when he tells you something because he's telling you from his own experience. And the same goes here. Those seven years were a pruning of the first fruit. The spirit being, the spirit calling out the first fruit. You see, plucking it, taking it away from the earth because that's what you do during a harvest. You pluck the fruit, you take it into your house first, and then you take it and you put it into your body. You see? And so the same goes with you. You get plucked out of the earth and you get taken into the house first, the barn. You get taken into the house first, and then you become one with, you, become, you get consumed, and you become one with the gardener, the husbandman who planted the fruit tree. You see, the fruit's going to be planted so that it can become one with him. That's why he planted it. Isn't that why you would plant an apple tree? So that you could take that apple that grows on it and put it inside your body. You don't want to chew on branches. That's part of the laborers. <laughs> you don't want to be chewing on the true vine. You see, you want to be chewing on the fruit. And that takes a process. Well, there's always first fruits in the harvest. They bloom early. They bloom first. I was going to pick them first. And then they're going to go through the process so that you can be told it, which is the main harvest. So this next seven years coming upon the earth, it's going to be, they're going to experience what I have experienced the last seven years. You hear what I'm saying to you? The main harvest, that is. Now, the main harvest is a large group of people scattered across the face of this earth. That's why Abba said, when he saves Israel and Judah, who are the people that are scattered, there's the righteous branch who rises up at that time. You see what I'm saying? He's going to grow up unto David, and Abba will save the house of David first, the tabernacle of David first, and make David as God, just like he made Moses as God. That's the branch. That's the man talking to you right now. That's the man that was caught up on the 37th day of the fast, August 21st, 2017, during the Great American Solar Eclipse. So there's coming the other part of that X, is what I'm telling you all about. You see? <laughs> because the, the eclipse is making X over the United States of America. You see that? So you could think of it as a coming past to see, a form of Passover coming by to look to see what's going on on the earth to see who really wants to serve me and who doesn't you see that there that's why the branch is a man who's a firebrand plucked out of the fire I want you to hear it good you see he had filthy garments on you see what I'm saying the branch did me I had on filthy garments which, which represented my iniquity and my sin you hear that but I was cleansed, which is what I was telling you about the 40, when there was a debate about my body, who would gain rights to it, just like there was a debate about Moses' body. So if the prophecy states that the prophet would be like unto Moses, then the same things that happened to Moses would happen to this man. You see? Moses carried a staff, doesn't he? Now, did I buy this staff? If you guys have been following me, then you know exactly when I found it and you would know exactly what I was doing doing when I found it. When I stumbled upon it. So then, no, I didn't buy it. I didn't make that happen either. Just like I didn't make the 40 happen. Just like I didn't make that eclipse happen. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying to you? I'm just forewarning you of the next seven years because seven years are cycles. It always is with Father, just like Joseph's day. Seven years of plenty and seven years of drought. Well, the plenty was all these words I've been giving you guys. That's the seven years of plenty. What you think I was gathering out there? Before? Nothing. <laughs> he comes back from the mountain, Moses does after the 40, and he delivers the law to the people, and his face shines like the sun. You see that there? 40 came. Yahushua came out the 40 strong in the spirit and gave them a new commandment, a lawgiver from Judah. You see? Lawgiver from Judah. 
If you know the scriptures, you know why I repeated that. That's Abba's promise to the line of David. So the, so the bloodline of David still on the earth. It was hidden. <laughs> still on the earth today. That's the branch. He's representing his knowledge that he remember who he is. Because that was the prayer the branch prayed. I'm giving you guys some really sweet stuff right now. I really am. Whether you can understand it and receive it right now or not, maybe it may take some years and maybe it may take a little while before you hear what I'm saying. But once you do absorb it and understand it, you'll be like, wow. Wow. Now I understand what the brother was saying. Now I understand all the connections he, he was trying to get me to see about the grandson. Now I understand it. Because who prayed the prayer? For the salvation of Israel when they would be led captive. What king prayed that? That would be the grandson of Jesse. Yesai. That's Solomon you know him as. He's the one who built the temple. Now read about the branch in the Bible. He shall build the temple. See how Solomon is a foreshadowing of that guy? So the branch had sin. He was covered in iniquity. What was that? Well, what do you read about Solomon? His lust for many wives, many women. See there? So he had to be cleansed of that iniquity which is one of the things Abba showed me in the 40, 40 through a vision. He showed me a previous experience I had done <laughs> through a vision. And I died at the end of that thing I had done. I was set up in the vision I had. I was set up and killed by a young girl. And when I said, well, what is all of this Abba you're showing me? He says, you're the man that's killed. Obviously, you know that already. <laughs> he said, the little girl is the daughter of the man whose wife you took. Well, that is iniquity. Yeah. Now read about David. Woo! What was the sin, Israel? Read about David. The branch shall grow up unto David is what is written. So then what was David's sin? He lay with a man's wife and killed the man. You are that man, David. Nathan told him. He said, I told you, you got to come right up to Mount Zion to hear what I'm saying to you today. If you're down there in the basement, you can't hear nothing I'm talking about. You can't connect none of the dots that I'm giving you to connect. So, when he built that temple, Solomon that is, he dedicated it. And that, that dedication, all Israel came to the Feast of Dedication, it's called. The Feast of Dedication. You see that? All Israel came to the Feast of Dedication. You see? Now, what did he say at the Feast of Dedication, Israel? If they bethink themselves in the land where they be held captive, then remember them. Now, I got a video. That's called Prophet Like Unto Moses on my page, where I'm prophesying on that video about America and the whole wide world, actually, and what's going to happen because of their disobedience and rebellion and not wanting to let God's people go. But matter of fact, we want to put them into greater bondage. You see that? They don't want to let them go. They, matter of fact, want to put them in greater bondage. So they're going to pay for it. So I'm prophesying on that video about that. Well, on that video I say, Father, if you, if they fall down before you and admit their sins and confess their sins and they bethink themselves in the land where they be held captive, then Father, remember us and bring us back home and love us tenderly. You'll hear it if you watch the video. Well, that's the prayer that the grandson prays for Israel. That's the prayer right there. You see? Because he's in it with them. I'm proving it right now today. He's in it with them. So he's part of the group that's going to be think themselves. He's going to be first because he's their king. He's their prince. Solomon is. <laughs> it's all there the whole time. It's all there the whole time. Oh yeah, the love songwriter. You see, like his father. 
talks about things that are hard for people to understand. Why? Because he was given wisdom. What does it say about the man who's elect that's to come in the end? He shall have the spirit of wisdom on him. I'm just telling you the truth. What else am I supposed to say? <laughs> I'm just, I know, I know. I'm just asking, what else am I supposed to say to you guys? If this is my experience, I can't lie to you. So I just have to tell you the truth. And so I am. Now, he tells the children of Israel that they were going to be taken, taken captive. Now they have been scattered all over the world. So now is the time where they bethink themselves. Was the branch on the earth standing up? Yes, I am. See, that's the time when Israel bethinks themselves because he's the one prayed it. So you reap what you sow. Solomon sowed a seed that day, didn't he? So then he got to reap it. Well, so your joy may be full, you will reap it. Because his word won't come back to him void. Okay, well then if you rethink yourself, then I will turn my face to you. And I will remember you. And I will remember that temple and where I came to inhabit. I will remember it. But this time it won't be made with hands. Because Solomon knew it when he built the temple. He said, the whole heaven of heavens cannot contain you. The whole heaven of heavens cannot contain you. You see that? And so surely this little building I've made can't. But it's the best that we could do. You know our hearts. Abba always knows the heart. Because that's all he look at. See that? So to be thinking ourselves is to realize what we were created for and what we were made to do. And, and the only way we're going to remember that is to go the wrong way first. That's why he said if they be led captive it's because they sinned. <laughs> so they had to go into captivity. See? So that they can remember. Okay, well the captivity worked because we remember now. You see? And part of that is confessing your sins once you remember. And like I told you, there's nothing you can do to make this happen. It happens because you see the, the wages of your sin. That's what prompts this confession, falling down and confessing your sins to the Father. That's what causes it. It's the wages of sin. You see that there? Now, what are the wages of sin? Death. So this is what I'm telling the whole world about these next coming seven years. You see? The wages of your sins are due. Just like mine were due. <laughs> you hear that? Just like mine were due and death came calling. So I'm not going to lie to you and not tell you and warn you that that's going to be the case. When death comes calling for you and it strips you down to yourself. That's what's going to happen because you're not better than Job. So if you read Job, there's your warning. He was stripped down to himself. He was stripped from his friends. His wife turned her back. His kids all died. Everybody forsook him. He lost everything he had and he sat there scratching his scabs. Correct? That's you. Because death came calling for you. Who do you think was talking to God when he said, he only loves you because you do this and do this and do this, but take it all away from him. And then let's see if he's still blessing you and still loving you. Let's see. All right, go ahead on and do, but don't take his life. So that means that if he said you could, he would have. So then who are we talking to? Mm -hmm. You see that there? So when death comes screwing with you, you feel it. This is what I'm warning you about, little fly. You feel it. You feel the sting lurking, trying to come for you. And what I mean is the paranoia starts to take you over. And it's because you know you did wrong. You know it. You know that you did something in your life that the payment is death and you know it's due. You know it's righteous to die for what you've done. You know it because you've read it in his word. You said, hold on, man. That's why I said the letter killeth. Once you read the law, you realize how much death you should have experienced. You realize how many times you should have died once you see the letter of the law. <laughs>